Hi, I'm Greg Storr. This video is to give you an idea of what you can expect in our online classes. We're going to cover two students uh, in this video. Uh, one is an adult and one is one of our younger students. The unique thing about our online classes, they are one-on-one -on -one with the student and myself or one of our qualified instructors. Before we start with our students, um, we're going to quickly show you a video of how we use our Procreate app to assist our students with their work and then it translates extremely well into online teaching. We started working with students uh, using iPad technology several years ago. Uh, we would take a situation like this one where the student has a photo and a drawing and look it over, make some observations. This happens to be what we call a direct light because we have a direct light source, which is the window, uh, light coming in the window, and that sets up a certain kind of a shading dynamic. And as we kind of slightly darkened areas, uh, it starts to help the uh, uh, the, the effect of light coming in the window. Our first student is Simi. Simi is an adult student and she is working on a painting of a dog for a friend. Can you see the painting of your dog? Yeah. Okay. He's looking good. Well, um, I still need to work on the fur, but I wanted to check in with you about the eyes mostly about the eyes but anything else that might be off too i think i think the eye uh on the left and you know we we could check it and everything but i bet if i put a layer over it and just slightly made it a little bit smaller in particular this inner part of the eye that that triangular kind of part that comes in towards the nose I just trimmed in uh, on the upper part of that left eye. Yeah. See, it it has kind of this um, shape. Right. And so I, I brought that back a little bit. I, I barely did anything to the inside corner of that eye but I trimmed it uh, mm -hmm. back a little bit. So right. I took a, I brought the left side in just a touch and uh -huh. I basically took a little bit off of that little corner. Right. Um, so I, I think the eyes are in the right place. I mean, he looks like he's looking right at you. Do I, I need just to brought make that a little, little bit. more white on the left eye? Um, you we don't see much, you no. know. No. Yeah, but you actually you can see the white of both of his eyes because he's looking up a little bit. Up, yeah. But I I I think in your painting he feels like he's looking up at you, you know. Yeah. Um, I if it was me, Simi. I think I would do the two things I just did. So there's a couple of things I think are slightly, maybe just a touch over um, modeled, a few edges I think that could be a little closer. Right down in um, here, that, that yeah. edge, that edge, Yes. It's, it's just too much of a shift in value. It is, uh -huh. you know, it is a relatively kind of abrupt end to his fur right there. Right. But I might bring that in just a touch. And okay. then either this value is too dark or this is too light or a little bit of both. Because both. Yeah. that will just kind of like that, that edge, that fur kind of jumps up a little bit mm -hmm. right there. I'd, I would 
just kind of quiet that just a touch. Okay. Um, this edge back here kind of kind of popped out at me when I first looked at the painting. You know, it's not really where we want to draw a whole lot of attention. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I wanted to look at the photo to see what it looks like in the photo. So for me in the photo, you know, we got this kind of a light coming from, I guess, a window from this left mm -hmm. side. And then he kind of turns the shadow about right here. Okay. So that little shadow could start back here and come up like that. Okay. And then if you, if we, if we darken this fur up here a little bit, just by darkening it mm -hmm. and, and maybe soften this transition, but just by darkening it, it, it takes off of that edge. Mm -hmm. You know, that edge doesn't yeah. pop out so much anymore. Right. The two or three other very, very minor things that I would consider doing would be taking a little modeling off back, back here where his back leg yeah. is tucked up underneath him. Mm -hmm. that feels like it is a little too modeled too and a little just a little too dark okay he, he is modeled everywhere but that sort of jumped out at me a little bit right here mm -hmm. you've got a you've got a pretty profound kind of stop right here yes i and did I, I just think that kind of that light mm -hmm. shape right over his eye it kind of flows up into this area. Mm -hmm. So if we took that and just let that kind of like connect to his head a little bit right here, just a little bit of a softening of that. Yeah. Transition right there. Okay. When I get to the point where you're at in a painting and I'm like, Hey, you know, this thing looks, fairly close to being finished, I yeah. slow down, I just, I, I make a decision on the two or three or four things I feel like I need to do. Uh -huh. I do each one of the things we talked about. I would do about 50% of what you think you need to do. Okay. And then step and then step back and look at it. Next, we're going to look at an online class with one of our younger students, Nora, Nora, watched our online video that we publish every Saturday night. And she did her exercise. She did a very good job, by the way. And um, I'm reviewing her work with her. Can, you can see me okay? Yeah. Can you see your artwork okay? Yeah. Okay, great. Um, how are you doing? I'm doing good, how are you? I'm good. I just wanted to go over your exercise with you. It looks really good. Did you have trouble with anything? Um, no, not really. You know, we're working on a flat piece of paper and when things get smaller, they look like they're further away. So that's the illusion of depth. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's the big message in our exercise is try to create kind of a, uh, a depth you know, something that looks like it's uh, going backwards in space. And there's a couple different ways. And you actually did a very good job on your exercises. So I think the first one we talked about yesterday was just drawing something like a cube or a cylinder and maybe shading it in a little bit. to, uh, you know, just to make it look like it has a little bit of form to it. Something like that. You did a good job on that. 
Thank you. And then the, um, let's look at uh, um, linear perspective. That's what this is called. That's when things get smaller and smaller and smaller. They appear to go back in the distance. One thing I would comment on your drawing here is your telephone poles. I would try to keep them vertical instead of leaning over like that. Let's try to keep those, you know, when you do these poles going back into the distance, let's try to keep those vertical. And if we put in, a, for example, a, a building, if we make the other side smaller, that will look like it's going back into the build and back into the uh, distance. Okay. Okay. Um, so you really did a good job on the atmospheric perspective. Um, I want to pull a photo up and show you uh, something real quick. Can you see this picture? Yeah. See how the um, see how the colors are intense and vibrant in in the foreground, in the front, and there's beautiful yellows and greens and. And there's a, a lot of contrast. There are light colors and dark colors. And then the next mountain, mm -hmm. um, it fades a little bit. And the next mountain, the next mountain, it fades even more. Do you know? Do you know what causes things to lose their detail and get a little blurrier as they get further away? I think the video you said something about fog. Well. Or similar to fog actually, but it is it is particles of water and particles of dust in the air. And when, you're, when you're in a situation where you can see something that's three, four or five or 10 miles away because it's so big, there'll be lots of those particles in the air and that causes, um, that blocks our vision a little bit and those particles also pick up some of the reflections from the sky, okay? okay. So let's, let's go back to your uh, exercise. And I think you did a pretty good job on that, actually. It's hard to kind of do that with uh, pencil, without color, I should say. Um, but one thing that you can do with when you're working in black and white is you can emphasize the contrast like I might have some really, really dark trees in the foreground. And then maybe I have some rocks that are um, a little bit lighter. And then the next hill. So do you see what I did there? I made some good, I made some contrast in the front with real dark trees and real light rocks. And then that creates a little bit of depth there. And that is called atmospheric perspective. And you did a great job on the last one, which is my favorite, overlapping shapes. That really creates a lot of depth when you draw something that overlaps something else. Even if it's like, let's say we drew a, a little funny little car and then Then we put a funny little house behind it. Mm -hmm. 
And then we put a little tree behind that. That creates a lot of depth when you when you overlap things. And maybe up here we put some clouds in the sky going behind the tree. So I would say you did a very good job on your exercise. And I'm going to email this to your mom. And we will talk to you soon. I think you'll meet again with Sarah next week, okay? Okay. All right. Good to see you, Nora. Be safe. Take care. You too. Bye. Bye. If you would like to find out more about online one-on-one -on -one real-time art classes at Greg Store Art, please contact us at the link below, or you can just Google search Greg Store Art, Mason, Ohio.